Hi, are you ready for some bedtime stories? I know I am. I know Bernard is. So should we get started? And guess what? Our first book is not about a bear. Imagine that. I was down at the school today because today was the day that uh, children did their kindergarten bus run. So I decided we could have a story about somebody else who's starting school. This is called Nugget and Fang, Go to School. It's by Tammy Sauer with pictures by Michael Slack and is published by Clarion Books. Can you guess which one is Nugget and which one might be Fang? Let's find out. Oh, there's a shark. Do you think that's Fang? I do. In the deep, deep ocean lived Nugget and Fang. Now Nugget was a minnow and Fang was a shark. They were best friends, really. Whenever the other fish in the sea saw Fang, they'd panic. Shark, oh my starfish, swim for cover, they would cry. But Nugget was always as cool as a sea cucumber. Don't worry guys, called Nugget, he's a vegetarian. Do you know what that big long word means? It means he doesn't eat meat. See, said Fang, as he's eating some grass. Now most fish never stuck around long enough to find out for sure. There were, however, some tiny exceptions. The mini minnows. Fang once saved them from being the catch of the day and ever since, he was their friend too. In fact, Nugget and the rest of the mini minnows wanted Fang to attend Mini Minnows Elementary right along with them. Fang loved this idea until his first day of school. Fang had never gone to school before. Questions suddenly swirled around inside his sharky head. What if school is too hard or weird? Or scary. I, I should go home, said Fang. I think I'm seasick. My skin is turning blue. Your skin is always blue, said Nugget. You'll be fine. Now when the first bell rang, Fang was not ready to go inside. Nugget grabbed him by the fin anyway. But what if I lose a tooth? Or, or two? Or twenty? What if I sit on a jellyfish? What if I get algae in my eye? What if I yawn and accidentally swallow someone? What if a whale accidentally swallows me? Whales don't even live around here, said Nugget. You'll be fine. Welcome to Minnie Minnow's Elementary, Fang, said the teacher. Do you see the teacher? She's a crab. She looks crabby, whispered Fang. Shh, said Nugget. Our teacher is nice. You'll be fine. But Fang wasn't fine. He wasn't fine in reading or math or science. Oh, look at that. He got caught in all the beakers. School's just new to you, said Nugget. You'll get the hang of it, I promise. Let me guess, said Fang. I'll be fine. Exactly, said Nugget. But Fang didn't think he'd ever be fine again. He wasn't fine in music. He wasn't fine in art. And he felt just plain terrible in the brief history of minnows. Fang was sure school couldn't get any worse. And then it did. At Minnie Minnows Elementary, we love to end of the day with share time, said the teacher. Each student gets to share something special with the class. Fang gulped. <clears throat> the last thing he wanted to do was get in front of everybody after the day that he just had. Now some of the Minnie Minnows shared their hobbies. 
and some shared their talents. Oh, look at the bubbles he can blow. And one even sh shared his pet rock, Bobo. And then it was Fang's turn. He thought about telling a joke, but he couldn't think of anything funny. He thought about doing a cartwheel, but he didn't know how. He thought about how much he wished a whale would swallow him up right that very second. And then, in the sea of faces, Fang noticed Nugget. Nugget was smiling. Can you see him smiling? And he was nodding. And he was holding a sign that said, Fang, our hero. And Fang stared at his friend. And for the first time all day, he felt, well, how did he feel? Fine? Hmm. No. No, he felt better than fine. He felt fantastic. Fang had something very special to share. I have the best friend in the whole underwater world, he said. That was a nice thing to say. And this made a big splash with everybody, especially you know who. And when the final bell rang, Fang was not ready to leave, but Nugget grabbed him by the fin anyway. In the deep, deep ocean lived Nugget and Fang. Nugget was a minnow and Fang was a shark. They were best friends and there was nothing fishy about that. Really. So if you're going off to school this year, I hope you find a friend as nice as Nugget. Well, shall we do a finger playing? Hmm? Wish I could remember one about fish. I know I know some, but I can't think of any right now. And we certainly don't want to cook them in our pan because, well, we just had a story about real live fish and that might not be nice. So maybe we'll just stick with hot dogs tonight. So can you get your hot dogs ready? I've got five little hot dogs they're cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bang. So fold one down. Four little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. Three little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So now two little hot dogs are cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and one went bam. So one little hot dog is cooking in the pan. The grease got hot and the one went bam. So now no little hot dogs are cooking in the pan, but the grease got hot and the pan went bam. Well, let's have a story about something you might like to eat besides hot dogs. And this is called the fairy tale cake. Is written by Mark Sparing and illustrated, they say decorated because I think it's about a cake, decorated by Jonathan Langley and it's published by Scholastic. And if you ever borrow this book, you would see all kinds of familiar characters around the outside. Like, do you know who that little girl is? I think it's Little Red Riding Hood because she's in a fairy tale. And, oh, I see a little pig. I bet there might be some others inside. And a gingerbread boy. Mm -hmm. oh, there's another pig. And I see a couple of bears and a little girl with gold hair, Goldilocks. And I see a little girl and a little boy with bandages around their head. And I wouldn't be surprised if that's Jack and Jill who went up a hill. But that's another ride. And if you weren't sure who so, some of them were, inside the cover, they're all there and they're carrying signs telling you who they are. Oh, look at that cake. It even has sprinkles on it. We make a cake. 
we bake a cake. A very, very special cake. Look how big it is. They have to get on a ladder to decorate it. And send it on its way. Up the hill and down the hill. Across the bridge. And through the fields. Rolling, rolling, rolling. Rolling on its way. Here it comes, that special cake. That very, very special cake. So close your eyes and make a wish. Happy, happy birthday. And how old is he? Let's look. One, two, three, four. I hope he can blow all those out. <laughs> and as I said, if you ever borrow this book, it's really fun, I think, to look through and see if you can recognize all of the different fairy tale characters. I think those are all the king's men up there. And there's someone with long, long hair. Rapunzel, yeah. And, oh my goodness, there's the king. He's got a bubble pipe. I never thought that was the kind of pipe that old King Cole would have. But I remember he called for his pipe. And he called for his bowl. And he called for his fiddler's three. <laughs> All right. Well, let's do another finger play. Let me think. Hmm. Well, we could do one, not about a king, but we could do one about a duke. And he's going to have 10,000 men, so you're going to need to put all 10 of your fingers up. Put them down for right now, but get them ready. The grand old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill, and he marched them down again. For when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. Now, if we were here at the library, we'd be standing up and sitting down while we do that. But I don't want to go out of camera frame. But if you want to do that, you can. So when they're up, stand up and stretch your arms up. And when they're down, sit back down or squat back down and touch the floor. Okay. And... We usually do it, well, three times. Once, so we learn the words like we just did. The second time, a little bit faster. And the third time, as fast as I can say it. And we usually throw in a tricky part that hasn't been there before, so make sure you're listening so we don't lose you along the way. Are you ready? Have you got your men down by your lap? The Grand Old Duke of York, he had 10,000 men. He marched them up to the top of the hill and he marched them down again. For when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. Very good. Okay, are you ready for the third time? Fast, fast, fast. And remember to listen so I don't lose you. The Grand Old Duke of York had 10,000 men. He marched them up top of the hill. He marched them down again. He marched them to the left. He marched them to the right. He marched them over upside down. Oh, what a funny sight. <gasps> For when they were up, they were up. And when they were down, they were down. And when they were only halfway up, they were neither up nor down. <laughs> okay, Bernard. This is the one you've been waiting for. And it's called Bear Can't Wait. Do you remember we've had some other stories about this silly bear? It's a rhyming story, and it's about him and all his friends out in the forest. I think this is the newest one. We just got this at the end of June, so I've been saving it to share with you. One bright sunny day, Bear paces to and fro. He fusses and he fidgets. 
Why is time so slow? For so many weeks, I have planned a surprise. But it's not till tonight, Bear says with a sigh. <sighs> he looks toward the sun, but the day's just begun. But Bear can't wait. Now, Gopher, Mouse, and Mole all stroll down the lane with goodies packed up in an down the trail. Let's make sure I say it right because we have to rhyme it. With goodies packed up in an old tin pail. Mouse squeaks, stoke the fire! Get ready to bake! Gophers dug carrots for a sweet carrot cake. Mm. Gathered in the den, they cook for a friend. But Bear can't wait. Now Badger stops by to help them get ready with baskets full of berries and a sack of confetti. Raven brings a candle and Owl brings flowers. Bear asks, is it time? But there's still two more hours. Well, Bear frets and he fiddles, he wiggles and he twiddles since Bear can't wait. Look at him there. He's grabbing onto his toes. <laughs> Chip chop, get to work, Mole says with a clap. There's cake to be frosted and presents to wrap. Well, Bear raises his paw. Oh, let me do the cake. He rushes in to help and then he trips by mistake. Boom, bang, splat. Oh, the cake is squished flat because Bear couldn't wait. Well, Bear sees his mess and with tears in his eyes, he says, now I've done it. I've wrecked our surprise. Mouse squeaks, Maybe not. We still have an hour. Go get more carrots and honey and flour. There's much to be done. Hurry, bear, run. And the bear doesn't wait. Well, time is almost up, but bear is very fast. They bake a new cake even better than the last. They hustle and they bustle while they decorate the den. And just when they're finished, who do you think this cake is for? They all hear Wren. But it's not for Wren. No, not yet. Hurry and hide. He's almost inside. And Bear oh, can't wait. Well, underneath his quilt, Bear hides with a grin. He tries not to giggle when Hare hops in. Do you remember Hare was another word for rabbit? Yeah, that's his friend. I think that's what the surprise is for, don't you? They all shout, surprise! Happy birthday, Hare! We planned you a party as a gift, said Bear. There's presents and cake, so let's celebrate. And Hare can't wait. <laughs> Look, they've got a crown for Hare and a necklace made of daisies. And there's strawberries on the cake and lots of sprinkles. Mm. And I don't see any candles, so I have no idea how old hair is. I do see two strawberries, but I can't be sure that's how they indicate how old he is. But happy birthday to hair and bear's surprise.
Well, do you think it's time for us to hmm, do our bubble gum? I think so. So put your hand in your pocket. Let's see, do I have a pocket? I don't have any pocket in these pajamas. So I'll just pretend I have a pocket and reach down and pull out my piece of pretend bubble gum. I don't want to eat the wrapper, so I'm going to unwrap it and throw the wrapper in the trash. Pop the gum in my mouth and chew it up until it's soft and squishy and ready to do something disgusting with it. All right, here we go. Is yours ready? I think mine is. Maybe three more chews. And then I'm gonna put my hand out. And what am I gonna do? Spit my gum into my hand and then clap my other hand on top of it. Ready? One, two, three. <laughs> uh oh, and now our hands are stuck together with sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your chin. To get it off, we have to say unstick. So here we go. Unstick, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your back. Unstick, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your cheek. Unstick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your knee. Unstick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your nose. Unstick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your arm. On stick, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on mom or dad. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, stick it on your toe. On stick. Sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum, sticky, sticky bubble gum. It's time to throw it in the trash. Well, that last story was all about Bear not being able to wait. Waiting is a hard thing. Some of you who are eager to be going to school, you have to wait a little longer. And some of you will just enjoy summer vacation a little bit longer. But this is a story about waiting too. This is called, I'll Wait, Mr. Panda. And it's written and illustrated by Steve Antony. And it's published by Scholastic. You see who's over here? What animal is that? It's the same color as Mr. Panda. I don't think it's a panda. Well, let's meet some other animals and we'll find out. What are you making, Mr. Panda? Do you know what that is? That's a llama. Wait and see. It's a surprise. No. I will not wait. Goodbye. But the penguin, and that's what that was, said, I'll wait, Mr. Panda. Are you making cookies? Asked the, what do you think that is? Hmm. I believe that's an anteater, because over here, way down in the corner, I see three little ants. Are you making cookies, Mr. Panda? Asked the anteater. Wait and see. It's a surprise. No, waiting is too hard. Goodbye. I'll wait, Mr. Panda, said the penguin. Are you making cookies?
cupcakes, Mr. Panda? Wait and see. It's a surprise. Do you think the rabbits will wait? Hmm? No, I'm done waiting. I'll wait, Mr. Panda, said the penguin. Is it ready yet, Mr. Panda? No, wait here. Oh, I don't like waiting. Goodbye. I think that's a heron or an egret. I'll wait, Mr. Panda. I said that louder because do you see the words are written in big letters? I don't think Mr. Panda heard him before. I'm waiting, Mr. Panda. Surprise! Oh my goodness, look at that. Wow, that was worth the wait. I know, said Mr. Panda. Thank you, Mr. Panda. I can't wait to eat it. <laughs> I believe there's another story about Mr. Panda. Maybe we'll have that sometime. It's about going to bed. So maybe we should transition with our five monkeys jumping on the bed. I've got my five little monkeys who were jumping on the bed. When one fell off, oh, he bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So four little monkeys are jumping on the bed. When one fell off, he bumped his head. So his mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So three little monkeys were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So daddy called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So two little monkeys were jumping on the bed. One fell off and bumped his head. So daddy called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So that leaves one little monkey who is jumping on the bed. When she fell off, she bumped her head. Well, her mama called the doctor and the doctor said, no more monkeys jumping on the bed. So there are no more monkeys jumping on the bed. And I don't think there are any monkeys in this book. I think there are sheep. And this is called Simpson's Sheep Won't Go to Sleep. And this is published by Peter Popper Press, is written and illustrated by Bruce Arendt. And I actually borrowed this from another library because it sounded good and we didn't own it, but we're going to. Now, Farmer Simpson works all day. He plants his corn and beans and hay. Oh, it's another rhyming book, isn't it? Yeah. Well, his feet get tired his nose gets red. At night, he likes to go to bed. Now his pigs and cows all cuddle tight with grunts and snorts, they sleep all night. His ducks and hens lie in a heap, then quack and cluck themselves to sleep. Each night before he gets his rest, the farmer tries his very best to gather up his flock of sheep and tell them that it's time to sleep. But they all have excuses why they can't lie down or even try. They need a drink, they want a snack, they have to go, they like to yak. The ground's too hard, the grass is wet, they'll settle down but not quite yet. The sky's too dark, the moon's too bright. Then someone starts a tickle fight. They smell a smell. They have an itch. They can't lie still. They have to twitch. 
they think of every reason why to stay awake beneath the sky. It sometimes makes poor Simpson weep. This time of night, he needs his sleep. Well, after weeks of little rest, the tired farmer felt distressed. And then to make him feel more rotten, he recalled what he'd forgotten. Up to his knees in fluffy fleece, he thought of his dear wife, Bernice. <gasps> Her birthday's here. Today's the date. What should I do to celebrate? So Simpson sat and thought a while and wondered how to make her smile. I'll buy a present, soft and pretty, from the best store in the city. So Farmer Simpson went to town to buy his wife a sleeping gown. It's another way to say nighty. <laughs> and as he chose which gown to buy, some other presents caught his eye. Oh, I'll buy these for my sheep to give them when it's time to sleep. Well, that night at bedtime, eight o'clock, he gently covered up his flock with cozy blankets, soft and snug, as comfy as a mother's hug. Then Farmer Simpson watched his sleep, sheep. Their eyes drooped low, their baas bawed deep. In blankets warm, they couldn't make one poor excuse to stay awake. And one by one, that farmer knew, each cuddly lamb and ram and ewe would curl up cozy on the ground and wouldn't even make a sound. Well, just one sound, but nothing more. They made a sleepy, sheepy snore. <sighs> Just like you. Good night, little lamb. But we're not quite ready to go to bed, right? Because we need to wiggle our fingers and wiggle our toes and wiggle our shoulders. How about your nose? Can you wiggle your elbows, slap your knees, stretch your arms, and get ready, please, because we have to have our flannel board story, right? Okay. And this is called Tip, Tip. Let's get this so it isn't too tippy for you. Dig, Dig. It's from a book by Emma Garcia. so you can see it right. Do you know what that is? It's a big pile of dirt. Look at this mess. What can we do with it? Well, with a digger, we can dig, dig, dig. And with a mixer, we can mix, mix, mix. And with a crane, we can lift, lift, lift. And with a dump truck, we can tip, tip, tip. With a bulldozer, we can push, push, push. And with a road roller, we can roll, roll, roll. So the digger digs a hole and the mixer mix the asphalt, the dump truck dumps the sand, the crane lifts the wood, the bulldozer, where is that bulldozer? Is that this one? No, that's this one, I think. Is going to push the soil and the road roller rolls a path. So what did they do with this mess? Well, we dug, we mixed, we lifted, we tipped, we pushed, we rolled. And do you know what we made? We made an adventure playground. And I understand there's a new playground here in Canada, so you might want to check it out.
because it would have needed all kinds of equipment to make it just ready for you to play on it. So shall we finish up with one of our Sander Boynton books? And this is Bernard's favorite because he's right on the cover. Do you see him there? This is the Going to Bed book. And it's published by, I always forget which one this is, Simon & Schuster. It's a little Simon book. Well, the sun has set not long ago. Now everybody goes below to take a bath in one big tub with soap all over, scrub, scrub, scrub. They hang their towels on the wall and find pajamas, big and small. And with some on top and some beneath, they brush and brush and brush their teeth. And when the moon is on the rise, they all go up to exercise. And then down once more, but not so fast. They're on their way to bed at last. The day is done. They say good night. And somebody turns off the light. The moon is high. The sea is deep. And they rock and rock and rock to sleep. And so will you soon, right? Well, thank you for watching, joining us for some bedtime stories. Bernard and I say goodbye and we'll see you again next time.